Howdy folks, Sapper here, aka Sean, and well, what have I been doing lately? I've been playing a lot of video games, but it's taken me a while, but this is what I've been playing. I've been playing Combat, and you can see it's by Compass Games. So basically Combat is a tactical level, almost skirmish. I don't know, you know, it depends on who you talk to, to what the difference between tactical and skirmish is. Skirmish, I look I tend to view Skirmish as being like a miniatures game, right? Man-to-man. -man. And this is a man-to-man -man game, right? So that's why it's tactical. So this is man-to-man. -man. Um, and you have, like, you have your... I'm, and I'm finished playing this game, by the way. So you've got individual... you got individual soldiers. Um, so obviously this is World War II. And the box comes with, I believe, German and Americans. So, and then you've get you've got your map. You know it's hex layout. You got you got your terrain on the map, and uh, each hex I believe is about ten meters. I'd have to look at the back of the box, which is over there. And I don't. It's got stuff in it, so I'm not going to do that. But I believe a hex is about ten meters, so it's it's tactical skirmish, whatever you want. Um, squad level man to man fighting. And so this is my first game. I did the introductory scenario, which is a pretty easy one. And uh, it's, a, it's a decent game. Um, it's, it's got some neat choices in it. It's not going to be on the level of, let's say, ASL. Um, I have tried to play ASL, and it's just, to me, the rules are just, it's just too much, right? It is a game that was, and I don't remember exactly. Let's see if I let's see if it says mm, well that's 2014 for that starter kit but ASL has been around since I believe the 80s maybe even uh, maybe a squad leader it was around earlier than that but I, I want to say the 1980s I believe so in, in the rule set in ASL is still very much rooted in the 1980s. It's not streamlined. They really haven't done, in my opinion, they really haven't done anything to modernize the game other than add more and more and more and more rules. So ASL was not a hit with me. It's not something that I could get into. Um, this game here, I think, for me, as far as tactical goes, it, it, it's workable. Um... I didn't find the rules to be overly complex. Um, and there are situations in the game, and it might be because I don't have a, a good understanding of the rules in the game yet, but there, there were situations in the game that were like, oh, you know what, I don't think a bad guy, I don't think the enemy would do that. And this game, I'm, you know, I should have even started out with this. This is a solitaire game only. So the Germans have an AI deck that kind of controls what they do. And then, you know, you you have the ability to kind of to do what you want, obviously, within the limits of the rules. So, you know, the, the Germans have programmed movement. So basically you have two decks of cards. You got the enemy deck and then you've got the, the friendly deck. And let's see if we can. So basically the AI will, it'll do something kind of like this, right? So you have your different states of morale. All right. And the scenario will, will tell you what your different states of morale. So in this particular game, both the good guys, the Americans and the Germans started out at normal. So what you do is when it's the Germans turn, you have your you have your different squads. So you have you can't see that one. So you got yellow, you've got white, red and blue. And again, the scenario will tell you which colors you're going to use. For my particular scenario, we're using red and blue. So what you'll do is you'll grab all the, the German guys and you'll pick a certain, it'll tell you, you'll, you'll grab a certain number of soldiers, a certain number of um, leaders, and then a certain number of dummies and dummy chits. And you'll throw them in the bag and it'll say, let's say you start out with 10, 10 dudes for the German side. Or you have 10 chits in the bag, and it'll say, okay, place six of those. So you don't know how many dummies you're going to get. If Let's say it says place, put three dummies in the bag, so you know you got seven guys in the bag. So if it says you set up six of them, 
you know, the chances are pretty good that you're probably going to have a dummy or two. And then you'll, you'll set them on the map like this. And then when they, when they get into line of sight of the enemy, then you flip it over. And if it's a dummy, you just remove the marker and continue to go about your business. If it's a, if it's a guy, then you can shoot and you can do things like that. Um, so how does the, the enemy AI work? So if your if your soldier, if your German guy is in cover, and depending on what his morale level is, so you've got oh dang it, why is it not gonna focus? So if his morale is normal, then he would hide. You give him a hide order. If he's aggressive, then you would give him an aimed fire order. So you can kind of see, and you have different orders. You have a ton of different orders that you can give, you can issue the enemy guys in the game as well as your, your own soldiers. And your own guys, they're pretty much the orders are the same, and they behave almost exactly the same. So that's basically, this is your AI. And then your card has an initiative value, so the lower the better. So in this case, we are looking at, we have red, Charlie, blue, and then Baker. So you look on the card, and Baker is a 68, Charlie is a 30, red is 29, and then blue is 41. So that's how you get your, your order in which they activate. So it's a clever little system, which I like. Uh, the thing that I don't like, and you can see here, you can see piles of chits, piles of chits, piles of chits. So let me see if I can find a really good example. So, for example, if we have guys in the open, we have to give them a sneak 5-6 order. And then you can look over here. These are all my different stacks of chits. So you have a sneak 1-2, a sneak 2-3, and of course on the opposite side of them, it's a, it just reverses, it reverses the order of the numbers. So that would be a 2-3, that would be a 4-3, that would be a 5-4. So you have a ton of chits. So... In the example that I just had, you would give each one of your, if this was blue, you'd give each one of your blue guys in the open at a normal um, morale posture, a sneak 5-6. So if this guy, he's blue, he is in the open, you're going to give him a sneak 5-6. You have four impulses per turn, so here is your here's your turn track, and then there's four impulses in every turn. Um, so what we do is then, how do we get our what they actually do? So here's your compass. In this particular scenario, it tells you how it, the scenario will tell you how you how you face your compass. So if he has a sneak 5-6 on the first impulse, he's not going to do anything because there's, the, there's a zero there. But in the second impulse, he will move one hex in the direction of six. So he would actually sneak down to here on his turn. On the third impulse, he's not going to do anything because he's got a zero there. And on the fourth impulse, he's again going to move one hex in the direction of six. So he's going to go that way. All right, he's going to go in the direction of six. So if it was a six, five, so the first number is the even numbered impulses and the second number is the odd number impulses. So that's kind of how your enemy AI works. And again, the problem is with the just the tons of chits because your cards are pretty specific. Okay, if he's if he's at a normal morale, he's going to do a sneak 5-6. If he's cautious, he's going to do an evade 2-3. And here's your evade pile over here. So you've got, you know, it's... I find that chit... The, it's it's neat the way you have your programmed AI, but man, the chits are... They're kind of unwieldy. There's just so many of them to fit each different circumstance. And then, of course, as the battle progresses... You'll change your morale. You got all your morale markers. So you, as your guy, either 
increases in morale or decreases in morale, you put a different marker on him. If he's nor if the if they're at a normal state for the scenario, then you don't really need to put a marker on them. But as they get shot at and beat up, they're going to go lower. As they pull off miraculous things, they're going to go higher. So, and then you've got wound markers and low ammo tokens. So you're going to, the token density on this is big. The hexes are large, larger than a normal hex, but hexes got crowded pretty quick. And then especially once you have a melee. So there was a melee here. You had that guy, that guy, that guy. I didn't squeeze them all into one hex. And then you have different morale states and you have a different amount of wounds. And then it gets kind of crazy. So it's a neat system. I don't know. I don't know that there's any better way that you could do it to make it less counterintensive outside of having an app. And then if you're going to have an app, you might as well just play a computer game and blah, blah, blah. So it was a good game. I enjoyed it. Um, repeated plays will definitely streamline how you do things. You know, you're, it'll speed up the play. You won't have to look up as many rules. I, I found myself consulting the rules every so often. And it's, it's not, you know, it's just little things. You just want to make sure you get stuff right. Um, but uh, if you're looking for a tactical slash skirmish level World War II war game, then, you know, I, I would probably check combat out. It's a little bit on the expensive side. Um, one of my big gripes as far as the cost goes is, let me show you. So the counters, they are the, I mean, you can see it, the, they don't pop out of the sprues easy at all. These are the kind, you know, the, the counters are on the, it's on a little bit on the thin side and it is going to take you some time to pop those counters out so probably my biggest complaint with this game is just i i want to say that i paid i think this game was around a hundred dollars and uh for that price i would like to have seen better counters um let me see if i can show you so, so here's some counters and you can see when you, when you pull it, when you finally manage to pull them out of the sprue, they definitely leave the little tufts at the corners. And uh, I'm a counter clipper anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. But, uh, if you're not a counter clipper, you're going to end up with stuff like that. And, uh, this is one of those games that if you're not a counter clipper will probably drive you into being a counter clipper because of that. And I, and I blame that on the quality of the, uh, the cardstock that they use and the way they, they punch the, the, um, counter sheets. So that's probably my biggest complaint. Um, another complaint is some of the terrain like this, this is tall grass. And of all the terrain on the map, you've got hedges and the road, the roads look nice. The rocks, um, can you see them? You got logs, you've got buildings. Those all look nice. The grass, I think the grass is a little lack lackluster. It can be a little confusing. You can't, I mean, you can barely, you can barely read the hex number in the grass. So I think the grass could you, or those, wait a minute. Maybe that's not grass because I think that is grass right there. Let's go ahead and look real quick. All right, so we have got, okay, so that is field. So yeah, the field is, they could have done something a little bit better with the field, I think, because that one gets confusing real quick. And then of course, you know, the printing in with the forests, it's hard to see in some places like that. Hex is a little bit harder to see. Um, but still, again, for... I think it's a it's a decent tactical game. I'm not going to say it's, it's awful by any stretch. It's, um, as far as the rules go, it's a lot more easily approachable than ASL. ASL, I mean, they say that I've, I've 
seeing the jokes where it's not a game, it's a lifestyle. Um, this one is definitely, you know, I had to read through the rules once, and then once I started playing, I had to reconsult the rules on several different occasions, but you don't need a, you don't need a, a four inch binder just to put all the rules in it, right? So, and it's got plenty of scenarios. They have an expansion coming out, which is going to let you do some campaign play. Um, this game, it's not going to be a realistic simulation of combat. You're going to get some things where, like, it might tell you to move off the map edge. Or in one turn, you'll have the guys moving towards the enemy. And then, like, next turn, you'll get an order that'll tell them to go in the opposite direction. So you're going to get some things that are going to be like, you know what, that doesn't make sense. But it's it gives you kind of that cin cinematic feel. And there are other tactical games out there that give you that cinematic type feel, kind of like... Uh, I think Heroes of Normandy does it. I don't own a game, but I've heard that that kind of gives you a cinematic feel, and I think some of the lock and load games do that too. So you got to kind of, there there will be circumstances where you have to suspend your disbelief a little bit, or rather than do um, what your AI card tells you to do, you might, I mean, it would be one of those things where you'd be like, you know what, I'm going to do this instead. So... You'll get little situations like that, but it's not necessarily um, going to give you that ultimate tactical feel. Again, it's going to give you kind of that cinematic thing, right? So like I had this big scrum right here where it was like one... Actually, it wasn't that one. It was up here. It was like three Germans versus one American guy. They were all in this huge fist fight. Eventually, the American guy got beat, but it would have been... It could have worked out where the American guy could have won, and that would have been hilarious, right? It would have given you that movie type feel. So this kind of does that. It's more of a movie feel than necessarily one of your, you know, nice, dense, tons of chrome, crunchy tactical feel like a main bat, like a game like main battle tank, right? Even though we're talking tank combat versus man-to-man um, -man combat. It's still MBT gives you that it's that tactical feel, right? And that one is one of those where you gotta consult charts and charts and cross-reference this and that you don't, you're not gonna have to do that here so anyway there you go combat by compass games if you got some extra bucks and you're looking for a tactical you're looking for a tactical um world war ii game you know hey check that check this one out anyway hey thanks for watching